Okay, so uh, in this video, we'll be doing a lesson on the uh, theory chapter number six, which is uh, risks to data and personal information. Okay, so this chapter is basically going to teach us on what are the risks that we face uh, when connected to the internet, and uh, also what are the risks that our information is facing when connected to the internet. Also, this chapter will also be teaching you the risks, and will also be teaching you measures that you can take to minimize the risks. Okay. So to start the lesson, the first thing you'll have to do is you'll have to go into your classroom. Okay, once you're logged into your Google Classroom, you need to come into Classwork. And uh, under this chapter, chapter number six, uh, you will be having three things that you will have to download. Okay, so over here you have the presentation of the class. It is in the form of a PDF. Then you have to answer questions from the textbook and you also have a worksheet. So uh, let's first uh, download all three materials. So let me just show you what I'll do is I'll open this and uh, have this PDF document. So I'll open this and uh, click here, open a new window. And uh, I'll be downloading this onto my computer. Okay, so once that gets downloaded, uh, okay, that's downloaded. Then next, what I'll be doing is I'll be uh, downloading the questions from textbook document. Okay, so let me open this. So this is a document asking simple questions related to the content that was in the textbook. Okay, so let's download this as well. Uh, let's download this as well. And. Uh, Finally, let's download the worksheet on chapter six. Okay, so that's over here. Let's download and um, let's download this document as well. So once you've downloaded your documents, uh, so these are the three documents that we have, chapter six. So initially we are going to be starting off with the presentation, okay, which is in the form of a PDF, okay? So uh, when I open this, we are on chapter number six, risks to data and personal information, okay? So starting off, it tells us that there are huge amounts of data transmitted and stored digitally, and a lot of this data contains personal or financial information. So. Uh, on the internet, there is so much of information and you, as a person who uses the internet, you'll be having so much of personal information on the internet, information about you. For example, if you're using Facebook, in Facebook alone, you'll be having so much of personal information of yourself. Some of you all might be using an online account, for example, to access your studies, okay? In the account, for example, you might be having some personal information about you, okay? So let this facilitate each person's personal information that is there on the internet. This information has to be protected and each individual has to take precautions to make sure that the information that they have of themselves online is properly protected. Okay, so sometimes, for example, we give our information to another company. So for example, you have an account on Instagram. What happens is you give your personal information to Instagram. So Instagram as an organization should make sure that they take every precaution to protect your personal information, okay? Because personal information is something very, very valuable. If it goes into the wrong hands, it can be easily misused and people can be, you know, easily blackmailed, okay? So this chapter goes on to say, because of this, digital systems are targeted by criminals who try to access data so that they can use it to commit fraud or identity theft. So when people know your personal information, it becomes very easy for them to pretend to be you. And while pretending to be you, there are so many things that they can do online, okay? That's what we call identity theft. So you need to be aware of the risks to your data when operating online. And you also need to know about the methods that are used to secure data in order to prevent unauthorized access. So first you need to be aware of the risks and then you need to also learn how to protect yourself when you are online, okay? So that's what this chapter is mainly going to teach us, okay? So, uh, Going on to the next one, they have given you this particular diagram is there in your textbook as well. Just a small summary of how much of information is there to, uh, on the internet. Okay, so when you look at this alone, you can understand 
how much how much of personal information is beyond the internet okay so then uh, moving on to the next slide the first problem the first risk that you face when you're online online is something which we call unauthorized access so unauthorized access is basically when somebody tries to access your network or tries to access your device without permission or in an illegal manner okay so when somebody hacks into your device or if somebody breaks into your device or if somebody uses your device without permission we call that unauthorized access okay so uh, unauthorized users can attempt to gain access to networks directly by themselves sometimes alternatively they may create software that runs thousands of times per second on devices inputting multiple login details so for example sometimes what happens is if your device is password protected what a hacker can do is he can write a program that will run a million different combinations of passwords until it gets the correct password to get into your device okay but nowadays that problem has been minimized because for example in your mobile phone you would have seen if the password has been uh, put wrong thrice or five times automatically the device gets locked for one minute again if the same thing happens it gets locked for a longer time okay so like this as the days go on devices are becoming you know uh, stronger against unauthorized access but it is still possible okay so something interesting is there is something which we call a botnet okay there is something called a botnet so botnet is basically a computer or a group of computers that will be used in order to break into another computer so for example let's take an example of a bank where a bank has a network and all the employees are connected to each other so for example if i want to hack into a particular user's computer uh, once i hack into that user's computer my ip address the address of my device is going to fall on that particular user's computer saying that a computer with this particular ip address has hacked into your device so then what happens there is a possibility that cyber police could track it back to me so instead what i can do is i can hack into somebody else's computer take control of their computer and then using their computer i can break into somebody else's computer so then what happens is when they trace the ip address my ip address is not going to appear my device's ip address is not going to appear the ip address of the person who i first broke into that computer's ip address is what's going to happen is going to appear when the cyber police or the cyber security start conducting investigations so a computer which is used uh, for hacking purposes or in order to do unauthorized access activities is what we call a botnet okay they have their resources used for harmful purposes such as running and spreading malware okay so there is this malware which is called stuxnet and it uh, uh, was a malware that affected the nuclear facilities in iran okay so if you do get time just go to youtube and just type stuxnet malware watch that video it will uh, tell you some it'll give you an idea of how dangerous a malware could be okay so your risk number one is unauthorized access okay your risk number two is something which we call deliberate damage by malware malware basically means a harmful program okay malware means a harmful program a program which gets downloaded into your computer and starts causing all kinds of problems to your computer okay so it starts showing funny messages unnecessary sounds start playing it may suddenly delete your files or it may, it may make your computer function in a different way so for example your computer becomes very slow for example you open one uh, you open a google you open google chrome for example you know for example 10 tabs automatically open along with it you did not click on 10 you did not click for 10 tabs to open but automatically 10 tabs open okay so your computer starts to behave in a funny way we call that malware okay so sometimes malware can destroy your data okay it can put a risk to the data on your computer okay then so this is our second point okay first we learned of unauthorized access second we come to something which we call a deliberate damage by malware this is your second risk to your data and personal information your third risk is something done by you you accidentally delete your files you accidentally format the wrong drive okay it is a mistake that you made okay so uh, that is what we call accidental deletion okay so that's another risk your data faces where you by mistake go and delete the wrong file or you go and format the wrong hard disk okay so the third problem is accidental deletion then moving on to the fourth problem is something very interesting which we call phishing okay so how does phishing happen phishing is 
normally done using either email or using SMS or using uh, instant messaging or using social media. So basically what happens is a hacker will send you a link or he will uh, he will send you a link using either email or instant messaging, SMS, whatever, pretending that he is from a real organization. So for example, if he knows that you have an account with Facebook, okay, so for example, the hacker has studied you and he knows that you have an account on Facebook. So what he does is he sends you an email pretending that it's from Facebook, okay, so he composes it very nicely and he tells you, for example, click on this link in order to update your login details. So you having no idea that this is a fish phishing message once you get the message you open the message you think it's genuinely from facebook you click on the link the link does not take you to the original facebook website it does not what does it do it takes you to a fake website which looks very 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 similar to facebook.com is it clear but you do not know you think you're on the original website what do you do you put your username and your password and you press enter the moment you press enter that username and password is sent to the hacker okay and then you are redirected to the original website so you for a second you think that the website has reloaded or refreshed or something you have no idea that your information has just been sent to the hacker your username and password okay so that's how phishing happens okay uh, okay uh, oftenly sent by emails these emails ask the user to provide their information by replying to the message or following a hyperlink that op or following a hyperlink that opens a web page into which the user is asked to type their personal details okay so they either ask you to reply they may tell you for example reply to this message with your contact details with your address or with some personal information of you okay they pretend to be somebody else okay so phishing messages can also be sent via sms or instant message apps okay so over here i have just a small uh, example okay so look at this this email it looks looks like it is from Nokia it looks like it is from Nokia but if you carefully go through this you can see there are certain things which give you an understanding this is not really from Nokia firstly if you look at the email address info at news.nokia.com okay then the next one is the subject save your stuff sign into your Nokia account before it disappears forever okay these are kind of things that if Nokia is sending you a message they wouldn't you know the wording does not look very professional okay so uh, when you go through this email, you are not very sure this is actually from Nokia or not. To protect your privacy, this account will be deleted in 14 days, okay? So they have said you to click on a link. Now, some people may fall for it. They may think this is actually from Nokia. They may click on this link and then they may be going, they might be taken to a website which is which looks very similar to Nokia, but it is not actually Nokia's website. The users may put their username and password. As soon as they put their username and password and press enter, username and password is sent to the hacker and they will be redirected to, a, to the original website so they would think you know the website has refreshed or something but they don't have any idea that their information their login details have actually been sent to the hacker okay so when you get these kind of messages the best thing is for you to call the company and verify has such an email been sent to you so if you look over here also talking about a account rbc account okay giving you access to triple w one so normally we access websites which is triple w dot okay so when this one comes you have to be suspicious okay so normally if you get a message from a company okay it's always better to call up and verify with them and normally personal details the company will never tell you to do it online okay in video number in the second video we'll be continuing from farming